Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. I'm currently in the middle of making my runtime clock videos, but for the final one I'm going to combine the runtime clock chip one with the built-in Arduino or pseudo built-in Arduino runtime clock. I want to combine those two file sets together and make a multi-file project. And while I was getting ready to do that, I thought it might make an interesting video. So here it is. To start, I have to make a, just a couple of tweaks to the connection because I'm going to display all three on here. I'm going to have the connections built in runtime clock up here, the Arduino one here, and then the, then the external chip set here. But what I noticed was on this chip one, I have the length set wrong. So I'll go to this one first. If you look at the total or the text, max length is 25. On this one, it's only 15, so I need to change that to 25. If you've been following along and you already have these files downloaded, I'm just showing you what you'll have to adjust. Otherwise, you'll have a, a strange reading down here. It'll cut off after the date. And then the other thing is when I, when I press this reset, I want it to send the value of the Nexion's real-time clock up here. So on the touch release, we want it to print S. We want it to send the T1.txt, which is this value right here. We're going to send it in raw text. That should be fairly easy to interpret on the Arduino and then set everything. I won't actually be getting into this part until the next video. This video, I'm just going to go over the file setup. I'm going to start with the real-time clock chip that we added to the Arduino. That was my most recent one. I'll try to remember to put a link up here in the upper right, but I'll also add a link to the description to the video where I went into more detail. I'm going to do a quick cleanup on this one and then separate it into three separate files. I'm going to get rid of this. This just kind of was a description of what we were doing with the I squared C. But since I'm going to send this value up to the next gen, I'm going to have to add some things too. These are just some things I add to pretty much every project I do. Since I'm using a Pro Mini, it only has one serial port, so I'm going to add the software serial library so I can add a second serial port. It makes it easier so I don't have to switch pins through the video. And then I have this string set up because any data that we send to the Nexion or if it's generated by the Nexion and sent to the Arduino ends with these three FFs. I have an asynchronous delay that I won't be using in this video but it's part of my cut and paste that I put in all of them. And then I set the delay length if I was using it. And then I have this data from display variable and that just collects the digits as they come from the display. And I have to add this serial too. Since we've added the port up here, we have to begin it. I'm gonna reduce this delay from 10 seconds down to one. In the video, I was displaying a lot more data and so I didn't want to go very quickly. But in this case, since we're gonna be counting in seconds, I wanna display it to that uh, Play it to that time constant. When we're done with this, we won't even be using this delay, we'll be using the asynchronous. I'm going to go through and delete these comments. Go down a little lower, and I'm going to do this. I'm not going to show it without the BCD conversion. The data that comes from the real time clock chip needs to run through a, a binary to decimal conversion, and we're going to do that when we collect the data. And you'll see here when we wire read the variable it comes in in the BCD format, well the Arduino doesn't really know what to do with that. So I wrote a little function that converts it from BCD to decimal. And down here I've included some external scripts that, do, that take care of that for us. And we're not going to print it out in this format so I can go ahead and delete this. One of the other features of the um, real-time clock external chips is you can get the temperature. And I went over that in that video, but we're not going to worry about it in this, so I can delete all of this. This area of the code goes over how to set it, and we're not going over that either, so I can delete it. We're pretty much left with this from the old code, where we're just going to collect the data and store it in variables. Now we need to generate a string that we can print. We want to end up with a format of month, day, and year like this, a dash, and then the hours, minutes, and seconds. That's how we are collecting the, uh, the real-time clock on the next gen. And I'm going to try to keep everyone, all of the devices, collecting the data the same. What I do is I set up a time string here, variable, and I just set it equal to empty. And then I just start adding everything. I add the month. If it's less than 10, we'll add a zero. 
because I want to make sure I have two digits in every spot. So anything that can have less than one or less than two digits, I do this where I check it. If it's less than 10, I add a zero. Then I add the value to it. I do that for the month, the day, and the year. Then we have that dash as a separator. We just keep concatenating to the string all the different variables. And then we're just going to print it locally to start with. I'm going to go ahead and test it now. I've done so many changes, I want to make sure I didn't break it. Compiled just fine. I'm going to run it and we'll show it in the serial monitor. And I just have the random date set, but you can see that it's working. It's 12, 5, 20, 32, and it's incrementing every second. Now what we want to do is we want to send this up to the Nexion display. If you're here to see me break up the files, I'm going to do that after I show this. We're just sending it out to serial pin 2 or serial port 2, which is what I have connected to the Nexion display. We have T5 is the location that we're sending it to. We send the string, which has to be escape quoted out. And then we need to send that end character string. I'm going to send this up, and then I'll bring up the, uh, I've got a camera on the physical display. And you can see it's 12, 5, 20, 32, and it's about roughly the same time. The next display clock is counting, and the chip is counting. And I'm going to go back and we'll break out the files. And in this directory, we're going to create a new file. And this is then the RTC chip directory where I have this code. I'll just create a new text document. I'm going to call it RTC chip read. And it's a dot .ino. And I'll open it in Notepad. Then we're just going to take all of this code and cut and paste it over there. We have to add a curly brace at the end. And then we have to give it a function name. And I'm going to name it the same function as the file. So we have a new function now called RTC chip read, and it'll execute all this every time we call it. So we have to go back over to here and put it in here. Save and close. And I'm going to close this and reopen it. This. And now you can see that we have this second tab with this data in it. So the way it works is you can add INO files on here, but you have to be kind of careful because there are some things you don't want to duplicate. But it works really nice for separating out your functions. I'm going to add one more in here. I'm going to call it CC stuff. Open it in Notepad. I'm going to copy these extra functions down in it. Save it, close it. I haven't quite figured out how to just update this without closing it and reopening it, like a refresh. So I just close it. Now your code is only this long, and it makes it nice to organize your code a little bit better. I'll compile it just to make sure I cut and paste everything and typed everything in correctly. And it looks like I got it, so I'm going to run it just to make sure that everything still runs the way it should. And we're still getting our time. So everything looks good. Now we're going to move on to the, the internal clock on the, next, or on the Arduino have this set up in a different directory so we're going to create a, a secondary file in here too but we need to do some adjusting to the um, code first in this one I've decided to move the other files into this one this is going to end up being our main file for everything and that's because I already have this stuff in here uh, and I already have it sending stuff to the next gen, so less likely to have an error but I will have some duplicate variables so I'm going to have seconds, minutes, hours, and days. 
but in the real-time clock chip one, I don't have them plural. They're just second, minute, hour, so I should be good. But this variable here, time string, if I put it in the main code, I'll have a conflict in the other one. So I'm going to delete this line here, and then I'm going to scroll down to where I use it, which is right here. And I'm going to define it back here because we're going to end up copying this over to another file. And so it won't be in the scope of the other one, so it shouldn't matter. So now, so now we'll come back up here. Now for this one, um, we're using the internal clock in the Arduino itself. And there really isn't a real time clock in it. We just increment this variable called seconds every second, and then increment the minutes. And we do that down here. So we're just literally counting out the minutes, the hours, the seconds, the years, and just adding, adding them on top of each other. And we do that based upon this asynchronous delay. So we'll execute this if statement every whatever we set this length of delay up here, or this delay length. And up here, we use this integer delay length to set that, and we're going to do it every second. So hopefully that makes sense. Every second we're going to count up the seconds, and then every 60 seconds we're going to count up the min minutes, and so on and so on. If we're going to do that, we can copy all of this data and put that into a separate function, into a separate file. But first we have to create the file. This one we're going to call it RTC Arduino read.ino. And you could open this in the Arduino editor. You could even close the file now. And actually, let's go ahead and do it that way. Since these two files are in here, even though they're empty, it should work this way. So we'll We'll save this, close it, and we'll reopen it. Now you can see there are two tabs. So technically we could create our function. And then we can go back here, cut this out of here. and paste it in here. And just to go over this real quick, as I said before, we're just going to count up our seconds when we hit 60, or if it's greater than 59, we're going to reset it to zero, we're going to count the minutes. If the minutes are greater than 59, we're going to reset those to zero and increment our hours. And just do that through everything. I do have a little trick going on with the days and the day array. And like I said, there's a link in the description that goes into a little more detail on it. And then we pretty much do the same thing, only we're using months and days, plural, instead of the other. But we're coming up with a string the exact same way. And then we're going to print it locally out the serial port. And then we're going to print it out serial port 2 up to the next display. Because I have that same data right there. So let's compile it, and I got it. So let's upload it and see if it works. And we're not getting anything. And you know why? It's because we don't actually call the function. So over here we have a function that's called RTC read. We go over here, and we have to call the function if we want it to work. So let's try again. And there we go. We've got the date and the time. And now if I pull up that camera, you can see that it's updating this one. 101 to 2021. With this particular program, I had it set up so that it would start at, uh, so that every one of these would increment after 10 seconds. I'll show you that again. I'll re uh, 
I think I can do it just by resetting the Now you can see it's 1231 2020 2359 and then when this hits 60 every one of these numbers resets I just did that as a test but you can see now that this one isn't incrementing we have to add all those files from the other ones we created into this one and since we're in we're going to add the I squared C section to this particular code we'll have to add it in up here so at the very top this include this wire.h library and then I have this error I put in there because when I end my transmission I always read this error status we're not going to get into it in this video but I do have a past video on that and then in the setup down here we have to have a line wire.begin And that should really be it, other than moving the files over. So if we go back to our file explorer and go back to the chip one, we should be able to just copy. We won't need this one, just copy these two. Move them into here. Now we are going to have to close this and reopen it. And then we have this read now. And we'll just copy it. Just to make sure I don't typo anything. And then at that same location, we'll do a compile. First error. Let's go up to here. Must be a capital. There we go. I almost made it all the way through without a typo. Let's go ahead and, uh, and upload it and hopefully we see both because we should get a readout for both of these. And we see them both. We know that this 1231 is the um, internal Arduino one. But now if I pull up that camera, you should see everything should be updating. And you can see the seconds on all three are loading. So now in my next video, I'm going to set this reset all button so it will set these two, the real-time clock and the Arduino internal real-time clock, to the same value. Then I'm going to connect it to a UPS, and if you follow me on Facebook, I'll put pictures up every day or, or however often I think I need to until there's an error or I see a discrepancy between the times. So in this video, we took two separate projects and we created a, a multi-file project out of them, which creates these tabs, and then we combine the two together. So it'll be one thing. This is more of a project for an upcoming project, but I thought it would make an interesting video, so I hope you enjoyed it. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.